During this market crash, I found that these 5 strategies really helped me stay afloat in preserving my capital. This is critical because I know I'll need every one of these bullets to fire whenever we find that bottom for the vicious bounce back up. Here is a chart showing the returns for every bear market bottom. We'll look at the two most recent ones in particular. For the 2007 financial crisis, the market dropped 56.8% within the span of 16 months. Then the one year return from the bottom is 54%, 3 year is 98%, 5 year is 182%. For the 2000 dot com bubble that tanked the market 49.1%, it lasted 31 months. One year return from the bottom is 24%, 3 year is 59%, 5 year is 105%. At the bottom of the chart, it shows the average return from bear market bottoms. One year is 52.2%, 3 year is 88.6%, 5 year is 132.3%. Are you locked and loaded for this once in a decade opportunity? Just as a reminder, do consider subscribing and dropping a like on the video. It really motivates me to create better content more often. Number 1. Shorting a stock The first thing that all investors are told is to buy low and sell high. If the stock price goes up, we make money. If it goes down, then we are losing. Shorting a stock is the opposite of that. We sell a stock at $100, then we buy back at $80 for a 20% gain. It's not that complicated. For example, remember when they first suspended all the China flights due to the outbreak back on February 11th? At that point, we should know that the airline stocks wouldn't have any upside in the near future. So the best way to profit wasn't to buy the dip, but to open a short position. From this chart, I've logged in few of the well-known airlines here in North America, Delta, United, Air Canada, Qantas. For the past 6 weeks, they've dropped from 65% to 76%. So that's the amount of profits the shorts received if they settled today. There are so many other industries that got hit around the same magnitude as their airlines. Cruises, hotels, travel, casino, retirement homes, take your pick. They all tanked 50 plus percent for the last month. These opportunities are only open if you have a short position. Number 2. Pair Trade This strategy is not only for market crashes, but for all occasions actually. The gist of the pair trade is that we pick two companies from the same industry. In terms of strength and market share, ideally they should be in the opposite ends of the spectrum. Possibly Netflix and Blockbuster back in the day, or Apple and Blackberry for the smartphone dominance. In my instance, it's Amazon versus retail box store for the consumer spending sector. I'm holding Amazon stocks for the long run, and I know it will take a hit during the rough times, so I short a much weaker player within the same industry. One of my shorts are Michaels, an arts and crafts store in North America. Their retail stores are approximately 20,000 square foot, very spacious and great for kids to run around in. Every time I go in, there are usually less than 10 customers. Imagine how it is during this social distancing period. They also offer these 40% off one item promotions for every visit. We all know how many items I'll be checking out each time I go there, right? 1. There is no reason to buy more and not benefit from the discounts in my opinion. This pair trade strategy is good for all market conditions. During a market crash like now, the strong usually outperforms the weaker counterpart. Therefore, the profits from your shorts in the weaker player more than covers the losses of the stronger counterpart. We'll look at the chart for the past 6 weeks. The one on top with all the green and reds is Amazon. The orange below is Michaels. We see that Amazon has dropped 9%, but our shorts in Michaels are up 68.5% giving us a net gain of close to 60% during this crash. Similarly, in a bull run, the strong player will always outperform its weaker counterpart. There are lots of opportunities using this strategy pretty much in every industry. If your view is right, then you benefit from both sides while mitigating any external risks. 
Number three, short call option. The basis of this strategy is to identify greed. Early February, there was a stock that was nearly invincible. Yes, that's right, it was Tesla. They've done everything on point for the investors, and the stock was on a tear. Running from $170 to $969 in a little over 8 months. Every YouTube channel was bullish on it, saying it'll disrupt not only the car industry, but the whole energy sector. When its stock is priced to the moon, there was a whole lot of room for error. A correction came late February, dropping the Tesla stock to around $650, and it bounced back to $800 a week later. This is what we identify as a dead cat bounce. Peaking at $969, dropping to $650, a $319 drop. Then bouncing back up to approximately half of that, $319 divided by 2 is approximately $160. $650 plus $160 is $810. That's when I made my move. I shorted call options for $950, expiring March 30th, 2020. Essentially, I set a ceiling for the stock until the end of March, saying that it won't go above $950. The hype was still there at the moment, and I collected $1,000 per contract on this play. Betting that Tesla won't break the record highs during a pandemic was a no brainer to me. Number 4 Trimming Your Portfolio. Many of us have the concept of buy and hold ingrained into an investing journey. So when exactly do we sell? When we start to lose money? Or when we need the money for emergencies? The answer to these questions isn't universal, and most likely your financial advisor can't provide you the ideal advice. In my opinion, there's no harm in taking profits, since paper gains are only virtual numbers on the screen. In a sense, taking profits is like bringing your troops back from battle, in order to recover and look for a better opportunity to attack. I've sold off more than half my portfolio at the end of January and February. That doesn't mean I don't believe in this company's long term. But when it's snowstorming outside, I like to bring my troops back for training, rather than fighting an uphill battle in the dark. As you can see, back in January, I cleaned out about one third of my portfolio straight across. Did the same in February. I've generated the sell prices for a few of my holdings. Apple, Amazon, Disney, Google, Mastercard, McDonald's. Wow, Amazon is really killing the markets, eh? Several things to note here is that the companies I invested in are the most dominant players in the industries, and yet, they can still drop 30 plus percent during rough times. When Mr. Market decides to tank, everyone goes along for the dive with them. If I decided to reinvest back into these stocks, I've essentially saved myself 30 plus percent. Money saved is money earned, right? Number 5. Protect your troops. If we were too antsy and decided to buy back every week the market dropped, our portfolio would definitely be deep in the red, with no ammo to fire back. Why don't we just hang back? observe, and wait till things show a sign of life. Even if we miss out on the first 10-15% to bounce, there is still 100 plus percent left in the next 5 years, as shown from the charts before. As I mentioned in the previous video, the objective of this game isn't to be greedy and maximize your profits, but to make the correct plays consistently. As we see from the bear market table, the average length of the bear market is 1-2 to two years, from the peak down to the lows, not 6 weeks. This is more like a correction. We could even say we are at the starting phase of a bear market, but only time will tell as nobody has a crystal ball. I know this much. If we look at Apple and Microsoft's performance for the last year, they are still up close to 20%. Exactly how severe is this crash, when there is still no fear amongst many investors? So what are you doing to prepare for the bounce whenever we hit that bottom? Building up your army and learning different strategies to capitalize on the opportunity? Eating popcorn and watching how the carnage plays out? Either way, stay safe so we can continue on this investing journey. Remember to like and subscribe if you found any value in this video. Feel free to leave a comment, I love responding to them as it inspires me for future topic videos. Take care and have a good one. Check out these videos if you want to know about different ways to invest in the stock market.